So hopefully you've already watched my tutorial video on the ePhoto Z300. If not, it's over here on the channel. Check that one out first and then come back to this video where I'm going to show you five tips and tricks to get the best quality at the best speed out of your photo scanner. Let's take a look. Okay, so straight into it, first tip is start with the basics. Make sure you're running the latest version of the Plustech ePhoto scanner software. That's gonna have all the latest fixes and features in it. So you're gonna know that you're at the best starting point. So to do that, come along to the uh, question mark in the top right of the application. Click on that and then click on about. Okay, so I can see I'm running version 6.5. You can then click on this link to go through to the website or follow the link I've put in the video description below. You'll come along directly to the download page. Um, you can see that version 6.5 is the latest at the moment, released back on 20th of November. That's obviously at the time I'm recording this. So come along, check that out when you're viewing this video, see what the latest is. And then importantly, to allow you to stay up to date, there's another change you can make. So if you come up to the uh, question mark again in the top right of the application and if you click onto the preference option what I'd actually suggest you do is select this auto update and then I'd leave it at the minimum which is checking for an update to the software every 30 days and then you should get prompted when you launch the software if there's a new update available and that's just going to ensure that you stay regularly up to date which again for features for fixes for security is the sensible thing to do Okay, tip two is a quick and what may seem a basic one, but it can save a whole lot of time. So what I want you to do is to avoid this. So do not scan your photos the wrong way around for the orientation they are and then spend time afterwards. You know, every click to rotate here is just gonna take up your time. Just put them in the right way around to start with. So it's always facing down with the back to you, um, just like I'm doing now. So this time it's gonna come out the right way around first time. That's tip number two. Okay, tip number three is gonna be to recalibrate your scanner every now and again. So you will have done this when you originally set the scanner up. It's with that magic white sheet of card that came with the scanner if you follow tip one to update the software i think you'll also be asked to recalibrate at that point but if you're already up to date if you've just done a few hundred photos through or you're seeing colors come out a bit washy or strange you're going to want to recalibrate it so in the application come up to the question mark in the top right click on that and just click on calibration and then it's going to prompt you to put that magic sheet through so i'm just going to drop that in the top of the scanner now and then you just click start and it's just going to take that through um, zips through fast to start with as you may be able to hear in the background and then a bit slower on the last part if you haven't already you know do not lose this sheet of what just looks like blank paper and um, they do sell for silly prices on ebay and amazon i'm not sure if you can imitate this sheet at all but yeah try not to lose it um, you can see here there we go calibration complete okay and then i just get back to scanning so yeah that's tip three to recalibrate your scanner okay on to tip four which is going to help with quality and just giving things a sensible file name so come along in the application onto the cog in the top right click on that um, you see the default here for the file name is a date and timestamp. Um, i never think that looks great i think what works for me is giving a bit more of a meaningful name so i'm going to be um, scanning some photos of sydney a trip that I went on i'll be working through the first album and it's going to be batch of photos um, say number one so that means a bit more to me and then when i come to batch two i'll obviously change that to a, a two um, importantly what i like to do is click the apply the quick fix uh, option here as well so if it notices anything a little bit wrong with the photo or it's not quite on point it's going to correct that that's also having this auto crop and auto de-skew uh, option selected which should be there by default but just check um, and as you will have seen in my other video I'm quite happy with the 300 dpi resolution but you can play around and try 600 if you want and again color I tend to leave on auto um, and the scanner leave on auto as well but you can come along and check out and edit those options as well if you're doing some documents for example okay so i'll just say okay to that and then i know that i'm set up for the best quality from that point of view okay so tip number five and probably my favorite once you've got all the others in place as a foundation 
you don't actually need to be in the ePhoto scanner app when you're scanning your photos. Uh, you certainly don't need to be saving in batches of 50 and exporting every time you do that. You can save a lot of time here by actually scanning photos directly into Windows Explorer. So the way you do this uh, within the app, come to the question mark. Uh, click on to the preference option and then you've got this option here that I've selected um, so you're probably going to see it unselected you just click to select scan and save directly to and then you can browse on here and select the particular directory you want to save to on your computer so I've selected this one under plastic photos called Sydney for these photos of my Sydney trip and I'm going to say okay to that and then I'm just going to close the Plastec e-photo app so um, I'm now within that folder in Windows. I've got the scanner turned on, of course, and I'm just gonna start dropping some photos through. And as I drop these photos through, you should just see them appearing directly here, saved as photos within the Windows folder. So you see how simple that is? Uh, that's everything else coming together and just saving the photos directly as files here which of course if you see my other video i show you how to save those upload them into google photos or you know whatever else you want to do with them you're free to do it now so i think this is the, the best tip that's going to save you the the most time but all the other tips one to four kind of act as a foundation to get you here uh, for that best quality and kind of speed option so i hope this video has been useful if it has please give a thumbs up please consider a subscribe and do go ahead and check out those other videos on the channel all right cheers guys